Well, it has been almost a year since a gunman opened fire in Chardon High School, killing Demetrius Hewlin, Daniel Parmador, and Russell King Jr. But the community of Chardon wants to make sure these three are never forgotten. A number of events are planned for next week as we approach the one year mark of the deadly shooting. And today, members of the Chardon community came together to show how the area continues to recover. News Channel 5's Paul Kiska is live on 5 in Chardon. And Paul, this is such a, a heavy, emotional time. And Lee, such an emotional time that Chardon Local Schools put out this brochure, this pamphlet here in the area, one year later, advice for coping. And when you open it up and read the inside, it reads preparing for the one year memorial next week. Parents guide for talking with their children. So this continues to be a time of healing, remembering and making students and teachers feel safe. During the last year, school leaders in Chardon have added more surveillance equipment, an armed school resource officer, everything they can to make students feel safer without feeling intimidated. Schools are not bunkers. Students are encouraged to speak up, share their concerns. And to give permission and make it comfortable for everyone to come forward when something doesn't seem right or feel right. What we can share, we can bear. Dozens of counselors, therapists, continue to work with students, teachers, and staff who face a lifetime process of healing. For some, it may feel like they have not been affected much by what they've experienced, but then months or even years later, they may find that they're struggling with reactions that are related to the trauma that resurface and disturb them. Students have been comforted by therapy dogs and Project Linus, which delivered 1,100 handcrafted blankets. And you would be amazed at just the, the sense of relief that a child has with a blanket. Um, one of the things that still makes me smile, one of our football players, 6'3", 250 pounds, walking down the hallway at the end of the day with a Snoopy blanket wrapped around his shoulders. Um, you know, those, those are the memories that will help um, move us forward. One visit really stands out when students who went through the Virginia Tech tragedy showed up at Chardon High School to talk to students in Chardon. And they commented that the students would come up to them and say that you are normal. You see the students of Chardon had felt that they were no longer normal because of this tragedy. This is the day the healing started in my mind. And the Chardon Healing Fund has been a great success. Coming up at 6 o'clock on News Channel 5, we'll talk about how much money they have raised, how much has been donated, and how it's being put to good use here in the area. Also at 6 o'clock, what's on the mind of some of the students inside Chardon High School? News Channel 5's Dave Arnold will have more on that story. Live in Chardon Square tonight, Paul Kiska, News Channel 5. Okay, Paul, earlier today I was so uh, touched by how well the students spoke about their unity as they try to move forward. Well, there are a lot of events happening next week leading up to Wednesday. It begins with a commemorative band and choir concert Tuesday at 7 at St. Mary's Church. And then teachers, students, and first responders will make a memorial walk to Chardon Square the following day at 1220. The community will participate in a candlelight vigil that night. We have all of these events listed in detail on Newsnet5.com.